so many people with type 2 diabetes feel like cutting out all their carbohydrates or going keto is the solution to all of their challenges. I'm Val, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and today I wanna to jump into the science and the cautions to see if keto is really the right option for you. This is absolutely not a one size fits all conversation. We wanna figure out what works for you, your body, in a sustainable and practical way. But let's start by jumping into the science, and I think this is really gonna surprise you. So what is a keto diet? A keto diet, which is short for a ketogenic diet, is a diet that's really, really high in fat, super low in carbs, and has moderate amounts of protein. And what happens is if our body has no glucose, which is its preferred source of fuel, glucose is the only fuel that we can have for our brain for the most part and what we typically thrive on, our body is brilliant and it starts making ketone bodies, hence why this diet is called keto, that our brain can use as an alternate fuel source. Keto is our alternate fuel source that our brain can work on in the absence of carbohydrates. So how do we do this? People typically, when they're on keto, they will eat no to low carbs. Oftentimes people need 50 grams of carbs in a day. 50 grams of carbs typically looks like two pieces of fruit in a day or two slices of bread. We're talking almost no carbs in order to stay in this ketogenic state. So when someone's eating keto, instead of having carbs on their plates, which we can find in fruits and vegetables and whole grains, it typically looks like a plate that's loaded with fats. So, th so think olives, avocado, cream cheese, cheeses, moderate amounts of proteins, and then very, very little to no carbs, including vegetables. So vegetables that would be good options are like broccoli and spinach, but carrots and other vegetables that have a little bit more carbohydrate con content, even like a pepper, might be something that people would avoid. So why is keto even being talked about with type 2 diabetes? When people have type 2 diabetes, that means oftentimes that their blood sugar levels are running higher and there's insulin resistance. And when people are going on a ketogenic diet, that means that you're eating no to low carbs. So oftentimes this means that people's blood sugars aren't spiking as much. They're pretty much stable throughout the day. Foods that are ketogenic foods tend to also not spike their blood sugar levels. So you don't have to worry about your the insulin response as well. So oftentimes, rather than learning balance, sometimes it's easier just to completely eliminate all carbohydrates in the effort to keep that blood sugar controlled. Uh, oftentimes clients that do this feel like their A1C is better controlled and your A1C is your average of your three months of your blood sugar levels of how much glucose is actually on your red blood cells. And red blood cells are so important in our body's healing and transportation of oxygen. So our heart health and our like really just our immune response. And there's so much that our red blood cells do. So it's so important to be trying to get our A1C back into a healthy range for you. If you're interested in learning more about type 2 diabetes, click the link below for an epic newsletter that gives tips, recipes, and the science on how you can improve your type 2 diabetes. So let's talk about the do's and don'ts or what you can and you cannot eat on a keto specific diet. So what you can eat is non-starchy vegetables. The leafy greens are typically the ones that are the least amount of carbohydrates. So think broccoli, zucchinis, um, asparagus. The other things that people can eat are protein sources. So think about um, meats, chicken, fish. The reason it's moderate amounts of protein is because if we eat too much protein, our body is so smart that it will say like, oh, let me use the backbone of protein sources and turn them into carbohydrates. So too much protein will actually kick someone out of ketosis as well. Fat is the foundation of a ketogenic diet. So there's some healthy fats like olives, nuts and seeds, avocados, olive oils. And oftentimes I also see people eating less nutritiously dense fats like butters and cream cheeses often to get their calories in. The quality of the fats does not get someone in ketosis or out of ketosis but it does have a huge impact on our overall health and our overall heart health. And here comes the list of foods to avoid, and there are a lot of them. So any form of starches, any forms of breads, any forms of wraps, any forms of delicious carbohydrates, even if it's whole wheat, even if it's whole grain, even if it's sourdough, all of those do not work in a ketogenic diet fruits. And oftentimes you think about watermelon and cherries and grapes and apples, even an apple or banana you cannot consume. Even a small amount is not recommended on a ketogenic diet. The other things is milk products. So actually like dairy milk that actually has lactose in it, which is a, is a carbohydrate. So we want to be avoiding dairy. Also, even beans and lentils or our pulses. Those are things that you would not be approved on the ketogenic list of, of do's and don'ts. And that also like any sort of cookies, cakes, candies, ice creams, all of those things we cannot have on a keto diet. So it can be really restrictive. Think fats, some meats or protein sources and some green veggies. And that's basically it. So what does the science really show us? 
Short term, there can be benefits. There can be balance out blood sugar levels. They can mean that you're not having ups and downs in blood sugar. It means that oftentimes blood sugar management or your continuous glucose monitor or your finger sticks might look better. Long term, which we really think about for overall health and sustainability, keto diet usually means for people going on this short period of time where they're all in eating no carbohydrates and that restrict oftentimes leads to binge eating. Like they can't eat any of their favorite foods. They can't go on vacation and just have like, uh, have a delicious dinner with friends. You can't have a slice of birthday cake at your birthday. So it becomes this all or nothing mentality, which we know long term actually increases the risk of obesity. So people tend to gain weight over time when they have these restricted diets. I always like to ask myself a question. If I'm going to be doing this, can I sustain it for two two years plus. The honest answer for most people is this is not gonna be sustainable. The biggest thing that I also wanna make note of is the long-term consequences of eating disorders that often can come with a ketogenic diet. It all comes from places of, you know, I'm trying this out, I'm giving it my all, I want to feel better, and these can spiral out of control and can, can take over our lives and can really become all-consuming. The other less severe complications that can arise is oftentimes that means there's way less fiber and diversity of fiber, so we can cause digestive issues, lots of constipation, a lot of people have are gassy and bloated Oftentimes this also can increase risk of kidney stones as well. And I've seen people time and time again coming to my office after doing a ketogenic diet and like my blood sugar is better, but now I have cholesterol issues. So it can really, really increase LDL cholesterol because oftentimes when people are choosing fats, they'll start adding in more less nutritiously dense fats or eating lots of red meat, which we know is not good for our heart health. We don't want to be exchanging one challenge for another. Like that is never the right way to do it. And there are easier, more sustainable solutions to manage blood sugar levels. After doing extensive analysis, I also don't believe that it's possible for you to be meeting all your vitamins, minerals, everything that your body needs to thrive and being on a ketogenic diet. It's really difficult to be getting in all of our B vitamins. It's really difficult to be getting in, like eating the rainbow, which is incredible for our gut microbiome or skin health or heart health or antioxidant needs. It's borderline impossible. And I don't use that word lightly. And often people, times people are like, oh, just take a supplement. We know that the way our body absorbs food is so different than just supplementation. And a food's first reproach is really what the research shows is the strongest in order for us to be optimizing our health and feeling our best. Our body has storage of glucose in our liver and in our muscles. We have to really be depleting our body's sources of glucose to get into ketosis. And a lot of people find that there are symptoms that are called like the keto flu. You kind of feel like you have a flu. Oftentimes our body kind of feels terrible when it's switching from glucose, our primary source of fuel, to our secondary source of fuel uh, of ketosis or ketone bodies. And if someone is doing a ketogenic diet, our body's needs for sodium actually increase and our body's needs for hydration increase because if not, it can really cause damage at the level of the kidneys. I also want to remind you that if someone has type 1 diabetes, a ketogenic diet will actually lead you to go into diabetic ketoacidosis and will lead you to go to the hospital. So this is absolutely unsafe for anyone that has type 1 diabetes. And and if you search keto on other social media platforms, what you'll see is hot dogs and ultra processed foods that have sugar alcohols in them and bacon and eggs. And people are like, ooh, I can eat just like eggs and bacon for breakfast and lose weight and balance my blood sugar levels. That does come with the consequences of not being great for our gut health, not being great for our heart health and not being great for our mental health. So that is a huge caution that I wanna to throw to you as well. Do you want my honest take? I would skip the ketogenic diet. For some people, they feel like it will help boost weight loss or help manage blood sugar levels, but the long-term consequences of yo-yo dieting and cardiovascular health are just not worth it. If you are trying keto, go for whole nutrient-dense foods, not just butter and bacon, and try to have a personalized approach that works for you and your body. But if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and click the link below to subscribe to our epic newsletter. It was so great to see you today and I look forward to seeing you again.